Today's video is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30 day free trial at www.audibletrial.com forward slash magstv or click the link in the video description below. Ladies and gents, and welcome back to Cold Waters with Mags, and we are on a new mission. So after the successful ambush of the Kirov and her task force, along with the cargo ship resupplying them, we received a mission to hunt down a Soviet submarine that was attacking ships within the region. Now as it turned out, this submarine was not difficult to locate. It came at its full noise, revealing its location quite clearly, not far from where we sunk the Kirov in a task force. Now, whether or not she was coming to receive a resupply from the same tender that we sunk there, or whether or not she was coming to investigate what happened to the Kirov, doesn't matter. We know exactly where she is, and she has absolutely no idea that we're here. And we've just identified the targets. We have a Juliet and an Alpha. Now this is an interesting combination. The Juliet is a diesel electric submarine that carries cruise missiles. The Alpha on the other hand is, well it's one of my favorite Soviet submarines. It is an incredibly dangerous attack submarine. The development of the Alpha was actually part of the reason for the US's development of the Mark 48 torpedo that we use on board the 688. Prior to the development of the Mark 48 torpedo, the main torpedo used by American submarines was the Mark 37. It was, by all accounts, a fairly good torpedo, but it had a couple of significant drawbacks. The primary of which was that the Mark 37 had a maximum speed in the water of around 26 knots. Now coming into the 1970s, US intelligence learned of the development of a new series of Soviet submarines. Now not only were these submarines going to be incredibly quiet by the standards of the day due to their unique hull design, but they were going to be incredibly fast. Faster than the Mark 37. Now this is clearly going to be a problem. If US submarines only have access to the Mark 37, which can only do 26 knots, and the new Soviet submarines are capable of exceeding that, Soviet submarines could simply disengage from any potential fight by opening up the throttles. At the point that a torpedo is launched, the submarine's already been detected, so it doesn't need to worry about being quiet anymore, but if it can straight up outrun any weapon systems deployed against it, well, you can't kill it. Now at this time the Mark 48 was already under development, but by all accounts it received a significant number of redesigns and upgrades prior to coming into service in 1972 as the Mark 48 Mod 1. And even after being accepted into service, already had a massive number of planned upgrades that were in the process of being developed in order to improve its performance even more. And it's a good thing they did too, because just five years later, the first Soviet Alpha was launched. The Alpha class was capable of 42 knots submerged. It's one of the single fastest attack submarines ever developed by any nation on the planet. Now, of course, that was by the standards of the 1970s. However, by the time of this campaign in 1984, the Alpha was still the fastest thing in the water. However, things had changed slightly by then. It was not considered to be an overly quiet submarine by this point. Its passive sonar equipment was not fantastic, although its active sonar equipment was exceptional. Of course, this particular combination of poor passive sonar and exceptional active sonar is not exactly uncommon amongst Soviet submarines, which leaves the Alpha as a submarine that is incredibly fast and incredibly aggressive when it's actually detected a target. However, it is extremely vulnerable to very quiet submarines and ambushes, which is exactly what is happening right now. You'll notice that the Juliet and the Alpha are not pinging away on active sonar. This is because despite only being 6,500 yards away, they cannot hear me while I'm running ultra quiet. They have no idea that I'm actually here at this point, and I fully intend to keep it that way. Now the Juliet isn't actually an issue. Diesel electric submarine, it's basically a 
boat for deploying cruise missiles. That's all it's really good for at this point. I am not concerned about its capabilities at all. The Alpha is a hell of a lot more dangerous, so I want to make sure I've got a really good solution on the Alpha before I put torpedoes in the water. Give the Alpha the minimum amount of time possible to react. Even though the Mark 48 is more than capable of running it down, it's still a maneuverable submarine, and I also don't want to get its tubes off either. Now, I have two torpedoes loaded, so I can fire one off at the Juliet and one at the Alpha, releasing two at exactly the same time. I also have a Moss loaded, on the off chance that I need it, and a Harpoon loaded. The Harpoon is a throwover from my last mission when I ambushed the Kirov. I never reloaded this torpedo tube, and I'm reluctant to do so now, as to reload the torpedo tube with a 48, I would have to pull myself out of Ultra Quiet, which runs the risk of me being detected by the Alpha. So what I'm doing right now is actually turning away from the Juliet. It's unaware that I'm actually here, but it is closing on my position, which, while it doesn't have fantastic equipment on board for detecting me, the closer it gets, the higher a chance that it potentially could, even if out of just pure luck. So I'm going to put myself in a 15 degree planes down dive, just a very gentle descent into the depths. And I'm turning side on. This keeps me moving away from the Juliet, reducing its level of close, although it is moving faster than I am at 8 knots, so it is going to close on me slowly. But it also has the added bonus of turning my towed sonar side on to the Alpha, so I should get a better firing solution on the Alpha. But in doing so, I am going to be diving out of the Shadow Zone, but I'm sort of banking at this point that neither of these two submarines are going to be able to detect me anyway. Now the reason why I'm diving in the first place is because I want to reduce the depth distance between me, the Juliet, and the Alpha. The idea here is I want the torpedoes to come in relatively close to the same depth that these submarines are actually at, which is sitting down at about 500 to 600 feet. Torpedoes are actually slightly easier to outmaneuver if they're coming in from sharp angles from above or below. So if you can reduce the gap between these submarines, as I said before, I'm not overly concerned with the Juliet. I think whatever I fire at her is going to go straight in and split her in half. But the Alpha might be able to turn hard enough to throw off the torpedo. While the Mark 48 is good, the Alpha is also very, very maneuverable, and if it manages to throw off the Mark 48 and the cable is broken, which is likely I've had very bad luck with cables at this point, and the torpedo turns back, there is a chance that it could acquire me and I could wind up dodging my own torpedo, so I want to minimize the risk that this is actually going to happen. So at this point we have a 47% solution on the Juliet. Uh, this low solution despite the range is largely because she's almost in our baffles. But we're sitting on 58% with the Alpha at this point. The problem is the Alpha's down at almost 1,000 feet, about 950 give or take. We have 59% on her now, and this is still an incredibly high angle. So about three minutes have slipped by of quietly waiting just to see whether or not we get a better solution. And at this point, neither submarine seems to be aware of the fact that I'm here. Solution on the Juliet has slipped up to 55%, which is much, much better. And we've got a much better solution on the Alpha as well. She's just hit 85. So at this point, I am just about ready to spring the attack, and there we go, we've just got to jump in solution up to 95%. We've got a clear signal on the Alpha, and isn't she a beautiful boat? So at 95%, she's 12,900 yards away. The Juliet is significantly closer inside of 6,000 yards at this point, inside of 5,000 yards actually, with 63%, which should be more than enough for a Mark 48 with active homing. So we want to get the torpedo on the Alpha first. I'm trying to lead the shot and guess what she's going to do. Because as soon as this torpedo hits the water, the Alpha is going to go active and is going to throttle up. But I'm honestly still not happy about the difference in depth between the two submarines. So at this point, I'm going to go 30 degrees down on the planes and start diving. I want to get down to about... 500, 600 feet to reduce the angle the torpedo is going to have to dive on, otherwise I think the Alpha should be able to easily outmaneuver her. So 30 degrees down on the planes, a negative 30 on the ballast, so we sink as quickly as we can while maintaining silent. 
This is still slightly noisy to do, but we've got no active ping, so they still don't know we're here at this point. We're heading down towards 500 feet. Passing 500, still diving. Now at this point we're about on the same depth as the Juliet and we've jumped to 78% solution. I am very happy with 78 on the Juliet. Still sitting on 95 on the Alpha, 79. So passing 600 feet and heading down towards 700. So at this point we're gonna back off on the planes and start backing off on the ballast as well. Down past 700. We should level out at around 800 feet, which puts us slightly below the Juliet and slightly above the Alpha, sitting smack bang in between the two of them. Now we're also 30 degrees full port rudder or full left rudder, and this is because I want to bring the nose of the Los Angeles class around to face the Alpha. Not too concerned about the Juliet, as I said, but I want to face the Alpha so that the cables on the Mark 48 won't break. At the angle that I would be firing from, I could fire on both of these right now, but in doing so, I would pretty much guarantee cable breaks on both torpedoes, and I would like to keep the cable on the torpedo for the Alpha as active as possible. And there we go, we've just got to 86% on the Juliet. And then the Toad Sonar comes into alignment with her and we jump up to 94 so we can now see her. And she does appear to be heading slightly for the surface. Or at least she was. Now she actually appears to be diving, which is... Possible problem. She may have actually heard something, although she hasn't gone active with her sonar at this point. I see no chance of her firing a torpedo at this point, which is her loss because I'm about to. Mark 48, tube 1 in the water, heading towards the Juliet, change to tube 2. Now I'm going to fire about halfway in between us and the Alpha so the torpedo goes live on the Alpha well in advance of actually reaching her. So that's second in the water. And now we're out of ultra quiet. I'm reloading the Tomahawk with another Mark 48. The Mark 48 in tube one broke its wire so we're reloading a torpedo there as well. So we have two more going into the tubes. The one heading towards the Alpha is still on cable at this point. And the Juliet is live on sonar. So at this point, the Alpha and the Juliet are well aware that I'm here. Torpedo has gone active. And it has acquired the Juliet. We've lost a little bit of our solution. We can no longer see the Juliet. But she does appear to be turning away and running hard. Not that that's going to matter at this range. And there's the countermeasure. Mark 48 detects the countermeasure, turns away, and then begins its turn back towards where it thinks the target should be. Looks like it's reacquired target. It's not where it, the sonar is saying that the Juliet should be on my end. But at this point, I'm pretty sure the torpedo can see better than me, and there is the impact, and we landed right on the stern of the Juliet. She was trying to turn away hard and took it straight in the rear. As Jingles would say, surprise butt sex. So that leaves the Alpha. Now the Alpha originally took a hard turn to starboard, trying to turn away from us before turning back to port. At this point, it looks like it's trying to cross the T with the torpedo, getting around it before it goes active. Now, we've still got a wire to the torp, so if necessary, we can guide it. However, it appears to have acquired the Alpha without any problems at all. Although it is maneuvering a little, almost like it's trying to search. I've never actually seen a Mark 48 act like this before. Normally, once they've acquired a target, they'll head straight in on it appears to be leading slightly too far ahead. Although it could be in my imagination, the Alpha is running hard, Torpedo is coming in, and... It's 
what I was worried about. The Alpha's going to dodge it. And it goes straight over, and that was close. So at this point, the torpedo is going to start its turn back to search, and I can take some control over it. We'll see. And it's reacquired. So I'm not going to take control of the torpedo at this point. I don't think I need to. Now it looks like the Alpha's now trying to ascend. It's going to try and force the Mark 48 to go underneath it. 48's still got good solution. You can tell by the ping. It's getting closer and closer together. It's tracking well. Oh, it's right there. And you can see how fast the Alpha is, how long it's taking the 48 to actually close in. And the 48's disengaged, and the wire to the 48's been broken. I can't manually turn this torpedo back. And it's got an active tracking ping. It's acquired the wreck of the Juliet. It's gonna go and torp the Juliet on the bottom. So the Alpha's managed to shake the Mark 48. This is exactly what I'm worried about. This is the first Alpha I've encountered in the campaign, but I've played against them in the single missions many times, and they are very slippery. They are very easily able to dodge torpedoes if you give them a little bit of room to do so. So, torpedo tube 1 is away, another 48 in the water, and we're reloading tube 2. And we're 15 degrees port rudder, trying to bring the nose around at this point to aim towards the Alpha so that we don't break the cable on this torpedo, because as you can see, the manual guidance is kind of useful. And there we go, there's the first 48 hitting the Juliet. That was extremely well thrown by the Alpha. Now at this point, the Alpha has gone to starboard rudder and appears to be trying to turn away. Looks like it's ascending as well. Now, my biggest risk here, because the Alpha is so close to the wreck of the Juliet, is that my 48 may acquire the Juliet again. This is why I don't want the cable to break. If the cable is still intact and it acquires the Juliet, I can manually turn the torpedo away from the wreck and back towards the Alpha and guide it to a position where it will take the Alpha out. If I don't have an active cable, however, if it acquires the Juliet, there's nothing I can do about it. Torpedo goes live, and turned straight towards the Juliet and acquired it, so I'm manually bringing the torpedo around. It's actually fighting me here at the moment. It's trying to guide itself towards the Juliet. But we've got the Juliet past its tracking cone now, and it seems to be tracking the Alpha without any problems. Cable is still attached, so if this misses, I can manually take control of it still. We've gone to 20% rudder to bring the nose around faster to try and keep this cable straight. And the Alpha looks like she's running flank speed at this point. She's at 41 knots. She's trying to push away from us as fast as possible and open a gap. It's not going to matter. The Mark 48 will do 55 knots in the water. It can run down the Alpha with no problems. Although, with correct maneuvering, the Alpha can outlast a 48 for long enough that it will eventually detonate on its own. There's the knuckle. The 48's recognized the knuckle, it's turning away. And you can see how fast the Alpha can actually turn in the water. It's just gone full 90 degrees in a matter of seconds. It's gone to flank speed, it's cavitating hard, the 48's turned back, and it has reacquired. Now I'm manually taking control here because I want to make sure this one hits. Come in from underneath and impact. That is the Alpha taken out of commission. Slippery little bastard. And with that, we have mission complete. So the Alpha here 
didn't appear to put up too much of a fight, but it's worth keeping in mind that it had absolutely no idea I was there until I put my first two torpedoes in the water. It was blind, completely blind, to the fact that I was attacking it. An alpha that actually is aware of your location is a hell of a lot more dangerous, but what this does mean is that the campaign has stepped up a notch. We are now going into the far more modern submarines. And once again, we made the news, and it is good news, which is always nice. These little news reports are beautiful for letting you know exactly what's going on and exactly how you're performing in the campaign. Which unfortunately, despite my recent bout of successes, is apparently not going as well as I had hoped. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for watching. As always, please feel free to check out my link in the video description below to Audible, the newest sponsor to the channel. Audible is a fantastic company with over 180,000 audiobooks for you to choose from, including a great selection of the Tom Clancy novels, which, as many of you have noted in the comments section, has been a little bit of an inspiration in regards to how I'm actually editing these videos together. My link is www.audibletrial.com forward slash magstv and this will get you a 30 day free trial and a free ebook download of your choice. And for those who are interested in supporting the channel more directly, please feel free to check out my link to Patreon in the video description below as well. The Patreon will also get you a Patreon status on my Discord server. Anyways, ladies and gents, until next time, click that like button, subscribe if you want to see more, and as always, dive smart, dive safe, and I'll catch you in the depths.